Frederick Thorpe is now questioned on his training where he admits that it is essentially just made up as they go along. And on top of that, they start submitting cases where they aren't aware of the law to the police who say this is rubbish, unsurprisingly. Yet they are seemingly undeterred. He makes several revelations in this about the training or lack thereof that he received. And then also about the initial bringing of the cases and the fact that there doesn't really seem to be anybody who's willing to say they were in charge of these investigations. Let's jump into the inquiry. So we're going to, we'll come on to that, but just back to your point about whenever you first took on the role, you didn't really have experience in Northern Ireland no. and you sought advice from post office legal services. Yeah. Do you remember who that was in post office legal services? Well, I had a lot of dealings with Rob Wilson, but I, I can't say for certain that it was Rob Wilson that actually get, said, we can't help. Um, okay. But, it, but I sort of remember him from my days in England. So moving then um, to the training that you received, first when you became an investigator and then throughout your time in the role, um, in your statement at paragraph 11, you explained that when you first became an investigator in 1993, there was no formal training available and you touched on that earlier. Yeah. And is it right then that your initial training was provided by the Security and Investigation Service in Croydon? It, it was, yes, the training team in Croydon, yes. And So it does seem there has, was actually some training, because before he seemed to say the assessment was that I required training to take up the role, but there was no training available and he seemed to leave that there. It does seem that he what he maybe meant was that actually... Uh, he did get some training, but it had to be an external agency because they didn't have the skills within the post office at the time. Was that team an external team or an internal team? No, it was an internal team. And to the best of your recollection, who provided that training? Was it investigators or lawyers or a mixture? It, well, several of them I know were ex-POID officers who, who changed to a training role uh, but whether everybody was, I'm not sure. That in and of itself is a bit baffling because just a bit before he said, essentially, I was the only man for the job because no one else had the qualifications and experience required because they've been redeployed to other roles. And then they've created a training department out of an investigation department they've disbanded, which leaves them short on investigators. Surely it would have been better to place those investigators into the roles which were available rather than having them train people exclusively to do those roles which will take time to ramp up. <clears throat> and how long did that initial course last? Well it wasn't like a formal course of sort of three weeks or four weeks it was a case of I would go down to Croydon and this week we would do um, interview techniques, investigation techniques or whatever and then um, another week I'd go down and it may just be going round courts to see how a court system operated and things like that. So it was very much made up on, on, on the, as it went along, it was made up until eventually they felt I had sufficient knowledge. And then I went back to Leeds with a POID officer who was then going to be my shadow and a mentor for any work that I did. The more we hear about the training, the more it sounds like a bit of a disaster. I mean, I thought he was going to say at one point there, it was made up on the hoof, but essentially it seems like there was no plan of what training was required. When someone thought it was all right and sufficient, they'd do it, and he'd pop down every now and then for a bit of, I don't know, informal work shadowing or asking advice of people, but surely... Surely, for such an important role, you need some formal organisational training to make sure that it's done to a competent and professional standard. At the end of the course, to assess, was there any assessment to see whether you had reached the sufficient knowledge to um, proceed? There was no formal assessment as such, no. And who was the ex-POID officer then that mentored you when you went back up to Leeds? I can't remember. It was a lady, but I can't remember her name. She was based in Croydon. Um, she travelled up from Croydon um, to Leeds on a weekly basis to mentor me, but I, I, I can't. 
Well, I can't remember her name, sorry, it was 20 odd, 25 years ago. <laughs> And so your initial training um, predated the Criminal Procedure and Investigation Act, which came into force in 1996. Um, do you remember receiving any specific training on disclosure after that legislation came into force? No, I, do, I don't, no. <clears throat> do you remember at any point receiving training on disclosure? We had... After my training was complete, um, we had regular security investigation team meetings um, where most points of law and um, changes to the law were discussed. And those, they, were, they were held probably every, probably every couple of months. Um, but I, I can't be, you know, be specific as to how often it was about that. I mean, this training is absolutely disorganised at best and at worst, completely insufficient for the roles that they were undertaking. It almost seems like if there is no formal training and even the people that are delivering this training, you know, who were these POID officers originally trained by or has anyone actually had any training whatsoever at all in any kind of investigative role or experience it seems like all the experience and all the training stems from people's on the job experience who themselves haven't been trained so it sounds in itself a recipe for disaster at the outset and who would have communicated the changes in the law to you in those team meetings yes yes who would that have been sorry sorry Sorry, so who, who would the person have been in those team meetings that would have explained to you as an investigator this piece of law has now changed? Um, most of the, the training was headed by um, people from security investigations in Croydon and Phil Gerrish was often active in that, in the role of um, leading the, the meetings. And you then also explain in your statement that team members would also attend periodic training arranged by the Central Security and Investigation Team, is that right? That's right, yes. Did you attend that training or was it members of your team? No, usually, uh, usually the whole team would, would attend. <clears throat> and who delivered that training? Again, it would probably be somebody from the um, National Security or an Investigation Team, one of the trainers. They, they had a... As far as I understand, they had a group of trainers who would come out and give that, or it may just be um, Phil Gerrish or one of the managers responsible for the particular topic we're talking about. And in relation to that periodic training, in your statement you say that the topics covered included audit and it says investigator, but I think that should probably be investigation, so audit and investigation with Horizon afterwards in brackets you put? Well, that was... I think it was just a one-day familiarisation um, session where they said, this is Horizon, this is what it can do. Not, and these are the reports you can get from it, but that was it. There was no real hands-on working on it, um, which... In hindsight, it was probably a failing, but, uh, but, but that's all it was, just a one day, this is what's coming in to replace the old pen and paper system. And it's absolutely a failing. I mean, they're using the word training a lot, but it seems so disorganised. It's certainly not like any formal training I've ever experienced. There's no assessment. There doesn't seem to be any sort of plan whatsoever about what will be covered. There's so many people seemingly involved. It's understandable that you can't remember necessarily names after all this time. But I'm presuming there's no records of this training as well or what it covered. And that presumably the people delivering the training have equally never been trained on any of the things they are now teaching other people to do. So it seems from the outset that un unless there's going to be some revelation about these people who are delivering the training that they actually know what they're talking about. It seems like from investigator to investigator, the experience is going to be massively different and that there's no consistency, whether in the topics they covered, the depth they've covered it in. And again, we're hearing about horizon training lasting a day, which kind of seems to involve shadowing somebody or looking at what horizon produces without any real grasp of what the system is, what the system does 
or even how to use the system, yet it's going to form a core part of the investigations process that leads to the prosecution of so many innocent sub-postmasters. It seems absolutely bewildering. Do you remember when that was? Was that around the time of the rollout of Horizon? It, it must have been round about the time of the rollout, so I would say, what, about 1998, 1999, but I can't be sure of the date. And can you remember who in particular led that um, one-day session? No, I, 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 I can't think who, who delivered the session, no. So during that one-day session, um, did you receive training on how to analyse the data from the Horizon system? I, I don't think the session lasted that long. It was more a case of this is the, the kit that they're going to be using in the post offices. Um, you can get your information off it um, or you can go back to Horizon and ask for information. But it was, it was a very, very basic, as best as I remember. And did any if it was very, very basic, I don't know if you're referring to Horizon or the train there, but if Horizon was very, very basic, then presumably it's easy to make sure that it works right. But I'm presuming it means the training was very, very basic. And it kind of feeds into the aspects that the training wasn't planned at all because actually even the aspects that are being inadequately trained in over a very short period of time aren't actually the aspects that are relevant to the role. So an investigator who doesn't know how to use Horizon but knows how to in analyze and audit the data that horizon is producing would be a lot more useful than an investigator who knows how to use horizon but doesn't actually know how to audit the data since that is data that they are going to be make decisions on individually as part of their responsibilities in their job roles as to whether to bring a prosecution against literally hundreds of people any of your training or the periodic training cover the conduct of investigations or prosecutions in northern ireland it didn't, no, because, as I say, the the two experts were Suzanne Winder and myself, and we didn't know a great deal at that time. So let me get this right. In the case, then, that will have been of Mr McLaughlin, there was two people in charge of an investigation against them who didn't have any awareness of the law that related to the jurisdiction that the post office was in, despite them making legal claims against them, which were presumably passed through the post office legal services department, who have also told the two investigation, investigation officers who don't know the law that they don't know the law either. Was there anybody involved in this case on the post office side that actually knew about the laws of the land in the place where they were accusing somebody of breaking that law? And um, is it right then that you um, mentored Miss Winter whenever she started conducting investigations in Northern Ireland? Well, we worked, we worked together. Um, I think the first investigation we did, I led the actual investigation. We submitted the, we were told that we couldn't submit the papers directly to the DPP as we were now a, a limited company. We had no more clout than Marks and Spencer or one of the big chains. So we had to go through the PSNI. And the first case that I remember doing, we submitted the papers to the police in Londonderry and uh, got response back, that's rubbish, there's nothing I can do with those, and that was it. So then we had to sort of rethink what the problem was. Well, it's not surprising, this is... <laughs> I, 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 this is absolutely baffling. So the police service send you back what you have sent to them, which they have said is a load of rubbish, which I guess isn't surprising, as you are admitting you don't know the law, the other person on the case doesn't know the law, the legal services department of the company you're working for doesn't know the law, so far, we've not identified anybody who does know the law. Surely it is a warning sign when the police send it back and say, this is a load of rubbish. I mean, I mean, what what was happening? He's very reluctant to say he was line managing Suzanne Winters more were working together. I was called a team leader. Yes, I guess I was a line manager, but I definitely wasn't in charge of her because presumably if he says that he's in charge of her, then he would have to take some responsibility for what seems to be a total hash of an investigation into into the case that they've then 
Bra, or at this case, at this point in time, tried to bring against a sub postmaster based on the laws that they don't know about. Uh, because the detective sergeant who'd reviewed the cases didn't seem interested in meeting up with us, so we made um, arrangements to speak to the police in Belfast and to try and work out a, a system whereby we could report, as, uh, as, as the first line of reporting was going to be the police, how we would report to the police. And just, um, just before we get into a bit more detail on that process that you developed... Let's, let's just... Oh, wait, wait, wait. So, wait. You submit a report to the police. They say they're not interested. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised because it seems like a bit of armchair detective work going on and some kind of spurious allegations. But then, rather than thinking... We need to actually know what we're talking about here and know how to submit files to the police, which presumably the criminal law team in the post office would have been aware of because they've done it prior to this point. But even if we skip over that point, the first thing that seems to have entered their mind at this point is we need to contact a different police department to see if we can work out some kind of process to get us over this hurdle of our case files being sent back as rubbish. Wow, 